Today, we're going to talk about behaviors you shouldn't accept from a man. But before we get into this, I want to I want to ask everyone, why do you think women accept bad behavior from men? Think about that for a moment. Have you ever accepted bad behavior from a man and continued on with the relationship? Well, let's dive into a little bit of why, and then we'll die, we'll we'll jump into those behaviors you definitely want to avoid when it comes to exploring a relationship with a man. So, why do women accept bad behavior? I think there's a couple reasons. First, I think when a woman becomes attached to a man, she becomes bonded to a man. There's this desire to almost double down. And what I mean to say is to hold on, hoping that something will change if the behavior is bad. So she finds herself in a form of what's known as love attachment. If you're not familiar with the book Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller, I highly recommend reading this book. By the way, there's a link below to all the books I recommend and Jonathan recommend books. Love attachment is how we bond with another person based on our childhood upbringing. So if you've become familiar with uh, avoidance, anxious, uh, and secure attachment styles, you'll probably be better prepared to answer this question of why you, someone might get attached or accept bad behavior from a man. Now, the other primary or another prominent reason, excuse me, is because it's familiar to them. It's familiar to them. Now, what I mean by familiar, it's family familiar. In other words, there's an aspect of this dynamic with this person that you're with that feels similar to how you might have been raised by one or both of your parents. If you're not familiar with the work of uh, Harvell Hendricks and Helen Hunt, I recommend getting this book, Getting the Love You Want. It talks about something called the Imago, the Imago, I-M-A-G-O. Can someone write that in the chat box, Imago? What this basically represents is we, when is something is familiar from our childhood, we could attach ourselves to another human being, even if the behavior from this other being, human being is poor, okay? So here's a couple of the reasons why. I think there's also something critically important I'd like to share with everyone before I dive into those behaviors. I've been working on some new content that I'm going to actually go into a deeper dive tomorrow. But I'd like to share this with everybody because I think women have this capacity. See, women, men are the gatekeepers of commitment. Let's face it. Men do the asking. Men do the asking of marriage, excuse me. Men initiate the dates, typically. So in this capacity, men choose who they want to commit to. Now, a woman might choose whom she'll have physical intimacy with. That's where she has more of the power. But these days, physical intimacy happens so quickly in the dating realm that once that's gone and passed, and I, I, feel, I feel bad for saying this, I feel like it's, it's inappropriate to say this, but women have given up their power to some degree because it used to be if a man wanted to have sex with a woman, he'd have to marry her. That was kind of olden times. Well, that's certainly changed. And not that sex is something that should be held in a power capacity. And certainly everybody is free to be physically intimate with whom they with. But the bottom line, when it comes to romantic relationships, women have the power if you at least decide, let me say it this way, most men will have sex with a variety of number of women. Women are women tend to be a little bit more exclusive who they have sex with. So women hold the cards when it comes to sex and men hold the cards when it comes to commitment. So your job, if, if you're seeking like a fully committed long-term relationship that leads to partnership, is to vet this man on his capacity to commit. I'm gonna say vet this man on his capacity to commit. In fact, that's what I, I help women with in my private coaching. By the way, there's a link right here to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. It's in the links below. Let's think about a man's capacity to commit. Number one, and I want you to think of this like a scale. You meet a man for the first time. On a scale from one to 10, 10 being he wants to get married someday, where does he fall on the scale of his desire to want to be in a fully committed relationship? 
See, these days, most men can start in the dating process saying, I'm not looking for anything serious. I just want something casual. I don't want any pressure. And a lot of women say, oh, that's great. Or a man might say, I want to take it slow, for example. And you're like, oh, that's great. Now, that doesn't mean he wants to take it slow on when to have sex. He wants to take it as slow as possible as to when he has to give you some level of commitment. Now, the truth is, with most dating today, be, being that it's casual relationships most people are experiencing, the only level of commitment they have to give is an agreement to monogamy and an agreement to exclusivity. That's right, an agreement to monogamy and an agreement to exclusivity. But you can break that agreement at any time. In fact, some people agree to it and they're not even adhering to it. Not much of a commitment. Yeah, these because that's really the first line of commitment is like, I'm not going to date anyone else and I promise not to sleep with anyone else. It's a form of commitment. It's a weak form of commitment. I think a stronger form of commitment is when you spend a significant amount of time together. And we're going to talk about that in a second. So first you have to gauge where does he fit in his desire for commitment? Number two, what's his well-being, both physically, emotionally, and most importantly, structurally? Again, I'll talk about this in more detail on another video. But emotionally, where is it? Does he have, is, is his emotional well-being in a good place? Is his physical health in a good place? And when I say structurally, I'm talking about the structure of his life. Is he in a good place? And rate that on a scale from one to 10. Next, number three, is his desire for you. See, a lot of relationships are hyper-focused on lust and limerence, so they might have high desire in the early stages, but does that translate once you begin to form a relationship with someone? Do they still have that same desire for you? And it's not just physical desire. Do they really desire being with you? Do they like you? That's something to gauge from one to 10. And lastly, his actions. His actions with respects to integrating each other into each other's lives, integrating each individual into each other's lives. How much integration happens? Because these are the four factors you have to consider when it comes to recognizing if a man is worth making the effort. Because again, you might find yourself attached to a man from an unhealthy place, both from the imago or love attachment style, only to feel like you got used, and then God forbid he operates in one of these five unhealthy behaviors. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know by hitting that like button. Please share this video and please subscribe to my channel. So one of the things I want to draw attention to is the work of the Gottmans, John and Julie Gottman. One of the books uh, written by John Gottman is called The Seven Principles to Making Marriage Work. And I want you to take out the word marriage and just put serious relationship in here. What's the benefit of reading this book is you can understand the mechanics to a healthy, happy relationship. But one of the, fundament one of the fundamental aspects discussed in this book is the four horsemen of the apocalypse. These are behaviors that absolutely damage relationships from the long term. I'm gonna share this with everyone, and I would like someone to write this in the chat box for me or write it in the comments section if you're watching the replay. This is the work of the Gottmans, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, and it is contempt. I'll repeat that, contempt, criticism, criticism, stonewalling, stonewalling, and defensiveness, defensiveness. Crit, uh, contempt, criticism, stonewalling, and defensiveness. These four behaviors are some of the primary reasons why relationships break down, and they're the primary reason why marriages end in divorce. Contempt, thinking you're better than someone. Criticizing them continually for their behavior or their actions. Stonewalling, that means avoiding having the difficult conversation and then getting defensive when you do try to have significant conversations with someone. Contempt, criticism, stonewalling, and defensiveness. Why did I share this in this podcast or this uh, video? Is because I think it's important to recognize these behaviors early on. And we're gonna dive into five shocking behaviors 
You should never tolerate, and a man, please forgive the word shocking. I thought I'd make the title shocking, but I think once I share these, it'll be rather obvious. So the first behavior you should never tolerate from a man is controlling behavior, controlling behavior. And I think one of the early signs to experience controlling behavior is when a guy pushes to have sex with you. Maybe you've met him for drinks for the first time and he invites you and he's forcing you or encouraging you to go back to his hotel room when you haven't expressed a desire to become physically intimate with them. That's certainly a person that's trying to manipulate you, get their way, or try to control you for their benefit. Just remember, in the early stage of dating, most people are operating from their own needs being met and not necessarily from a place of being a giver, but being from a place of taker. And certainly those early signs are some things you should be focused on. Does he act in a controlling manner, such as I just described a moment ago? Number two, he gaslights you. Now gaslighting is when they turn things around, make things your fault, accuse you of things, try to change your perception of the world. They're dismissive of you. They're trying to change the narrative. They turn things around. They say things like, you're too sensitive. You're too needy. You're too demanding. Those are just some simple examples of gaslighting. And while it's, it's human beings, listen, most humans aren't narcissists, okay, that are intentionally gaslighting you. But this is a behavior that if you see it early on in the dating process, it's only gonna get progressively worse. So start to pay attention to how he communicates to you, particularly if he tries to undermine your perception of the world. And if he's dismissive of you, that's a sign he might be trying to gaslight you. Okay, that's number two. Number three, he's verbally or physically abusive. You know, sadly, I, I think it's obvious that if someone's physically abusive early on, that means run, forest, run. I think when men early on touch women inappropriately, that's a beginning sign that he doesn't respect your boundaries. And I think you should be very mindful of that, be observant of that. Now, again, within reason, because some people can be jesting and playfulness and things get misunderstood. But certainly, if you feel like a boundary is being crossed from a physical sense, run, forest, run, as Lisa just pointed out. But also verbally abusive. He insults you or he does something called negging, where he criticizes. This is back to sarcasm and criticism earlier. But sarcasm, insults, and negging or being negative towards you, this is a neuro-linguistic programming technique to undermine a person's confidence. And when a person's confidence is undermined, they will tolerate more and more bad behavior. So be mindful and pay attention to these things. Number, three, number four, he avoids expressing his feelings and he avoids progressing the relationship. Let me repeat that. He avoids expressing his feelings about you towards you and he avoids progressing the relationship. Listen, if you're a woman who wants a significant relationship where you're, you're in partnership with someone, you're acting in a teammate capacity, then be mindful that you have, there is a, di listen, I want to say it's, we got to stop fucking giving men a pass here on the timeline. Look, it doesn't, listen, I knew within a very short period of time, I wanted to invest fully in my partnership my relationship with Marie. It didn't, men who know what they want go after what they want and they express it very early on. Now, let me just, let me put this in a box for a second. You gotta put this pre-sex, all the things he says, and after sex, all the things he, all the things he says, okay? What he says to get you into the bedroom, because remember earlier we said you have all the power when it, you hold all the cards when it comes to sex. But men hold the cards with commitment. So be mindful. Does he continually progress the relationship after he's been physically intimate with you? If he starts pulling away, you shouldn't tolerate that behavior. First, establish, listen, all of you know what I talk about, establishing the ground rules. Ground rules is what's your standard for a relationship? 
Then you lay your cards on the table. You talk about your past relationships to get a sense of who this person is. And most importantly, you adopt what I talk about is radical honesty. And that is speaking from the heart within reason, be transparent if it's material to the relationship, talk about these things and don't let these men off the fucking hook, okay? That's my invitation for all of you. And last but not least, behavior you shouldn't uh, tolerate. He attempts to make you feel bad for seeing the people you love. He attempts to make you feel bad for not wanting to spend time with him. That's a behavior I would never want any of you to accept. You should, that a partner should be encouraging you to want to spend time. By the way, women do this as well. The whole narrative where a guy wants to play golf with his friends and she guilts him into spending time with her after he spent every single day of the week for a month and he wants one. I'm just giving an example of how we men feel about that. But when someone guilts you or makes you feel bad, for spending time with the people you love, that's a behavior you should never tolerate. And if you can't establish a boundary around that, then I would say this person isn't the right person for you. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. Okay, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Please post a comment below if it did. And if it did, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel, hit that bell, and check out all the links below to connect with me, whether it's a one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching call with me or even my group called Midlife Love Mastery. All right, those that know my format know it's time for Q&A.